Namaskar. Today we will discuss convolution theorem of Fourier transform. This is our last topic from this module. Okay, let's start. Suppose f of x and g of x are two functions. Then we can define an integral like this. This is an operation between two functions. Okay, we denote this operation by star. So what is f star g? f and g are two functions. Then we can define an operation star. It's like our addition or subtraction like that. f star g of x. So f star g is also a function. f and g are functions. Then f star g also a function of x. Okay. It is defined by integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of u g of x minus u du. Okay, this integration is with respect to u. So after integrating, we substitute lower limit and upper limit. Then what happened? This entire thing is a function of x. Clear? That's why this is a function of x. So anyway, f and g are two functions. Then f star g of x is also a function of x. Clear? This is the definition of f star g. Okay. If you substitute t equal to x minus u, then what about our uh, dt? This is a new variable t. So dt equal to minus du. Clear? So what about du? So du equal to minus dt. And similarly, what about the range of the new variable t? Uh, whenever u equal to minus infinity, what happened? Whenever u equal to minus infinity, t is equal to x minus x minus minus infinity that is x plus infinity okay here we can treat x as a fixed number because here the variable is u okay so we can treat x as a fixed number so uh, now uh, t equal to x plus infinity so infinity plus anything that is again infinity so t equal to infinity okay so whenever u equal to minus infinity t equal to infinity Similarly, whenever u equal to plus infinity, what happened? Then what about t? t equal to x minus infinity. So this is minus infinity. Minus infinity means a, a very small quantity, very small quantity plus something. That is again a very small quantity. That is the idea. Okay, so t equal to minus infinity. So what about this integral? And also there is a one more time u. We have to convert every a term containing u in terms of t. So what about uh, u uh, from this expression uh, u equal to uh, x minus t right if you take u on the left side so this become u equal to x minus t. So now everything is clear. Okay so what about this integral? So this integral become like this integral infinity to minus infinity f of what about u? u is x minus t f of x minus t g of our x minus u is t so g of t du what about du du is minus dt so this is in this is product into minus dt okay also we know that integral a to b is equal to minus of integral b to a okay so if you interchange this limit like minus infinity to plus infinity then we have a uh, one more minus sign already we have one minus sign this minus into minus become plus so this integral become integral minus infinity to plus infinity g of t f of x minus t dt. Also we know that this is a definite integral. So uh, the value of the definite integral independent of the variable. Whatever be the variable we used the uh, net effect there is no change in the net effect. Okay. So I am going to replace this independent variable t by another independent variable u. A simple substitution or symbol replacement okay so integral minus infinity plus infinity we just replace the independent variable t by u that's all there is no change in the value so g of u x of f of x minus u du okay and what about this one with respect to this definition okay our def f, uh, f star g is defined by integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of u g of x minus u du then comparing with this definition, what about this one? This is integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Instead of f of u, this is g of u. This become f of x minus u du. So what about this integral in terms of star operation? Yes, this is exactly our g star f. Okay, so this is nothing. This is our g star f. Okay, so if you define f star g of x is like this, 
then it is clear that g star f also same as f star g that means this operation star is commutative clear now we we are ready to define convolution the convolution of functions f of x and g of x is defined by uh, like this and it is denoted by f star f star g of x this is a notation is defined by you can use any of these two formulas because both are same first of all we define f star g using this formula but we can easily show that this is same as this okay so we can define f star g using any of these formulas that's why minus infinity to plus infinity f of u g of x minus u du or that is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity g of u f of x minus u du okay so this is the definition of convolution of two functions okay next we are going to define convolution theorem for fourier transform suppose f of x and g of x are piecewise continuous and absolutely integrable then the fourier transform of f star g okay f and g are two functions we consider the convolution of f and g that is f star g you can use any of these formulas then what is the the question is what is the fourier transform of the convolution you can find the fourier transform of the convolution using this formula okay what is the formula root 2 pi f of f into f of g this is the product of fourier transforms of f and g first we first we have to find the fourier transform of f then we have to find the fourier transform of g then you take the product that into root 2 pi that gives the Fourier transform of the convolution because sometimes this convolution the part of this convolution is maybe complicated okay so we can find the Fourier transform of the convolution using this formula okay consider this problem verify the convolution theorem for f of x and g of f of x equal to g of x equal to e raised to minus x square here both the functions are same that's all okay f of x is e raised to minus x square g of x also e raised to minus x square you have to verify the convolution theorem for these two functions okay we know that the convolution theorem is this one Fourier transform of f star g is equal to power root of 2 pi f of f into f of g here the question is verify the convolution theorem so how to verify the convolution theorem we have to find uh, both sides separately and check whether they are same or not that is verification okay so we have to find f star g then find the Fourier transform similarly we have to find f of f and f of g and consider this product and we have to check whether LHS is same as RHS okay anyway in this case uh, the computation of RHS is uh, easy so first I am going to evaluate the right hand side for evaluating the right hand side we have to find the Fourier transform of f and Fourier transform of g and f equal to e raised to minus x square okay so first we are we are first we have to find the Fourier transform of this function in our lecture 6 uh, we proved that the Fourier transform of e raised to minus k x square is equal to 1 by root 2 k e raised to minus omega square by 4 k we have to find the Fourier transform of e raised to minus x square so which value of k gives this one Yes, if you choose k equal to 1, then this becomes Fourier transform of e raised to minus x square is equal to 1 by root 2 e raised to minus omega square by 4. So, this is the Fourier transform of f as well as g. Okay. So, now we can easily evaluate the right hand side. What is the right hand side? Right hand side is root 2 pi f of f into f of g. That is equal to root 2 pi. What is f of f? f of s is this one, 1 by root 2 e raised to minus omega square square by 4 and similarly f of g that is also same for your transform so 1 by root 2 e raised to minus omega square by 4 okay by combining this constants and uh, this uh, e to the power we get uh, like this the constant become root pi by 2 by cancel we can uh, simplify this combining this all these constants this become root pi by 2 and this is e raised to minus omega square by 2 because this is e raised to a into e raised to b form so this is e raised to a plus b so that become e raised to 2 minus 2 times omega square by 4 that is nothing e raised to minus omega square. anyway the right hand side is like this okay so next we have to find this left hand side that means we have to find the Fourier transform of f star g to find the Fourier transform 
first of all we have to find the convolution f star of g so next we are going to find f star g okay by definition this is our f star g for convolution integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of u g of x minus u du here f of x and g of x both are same function e raised to minus x square so what about this integral reducing these two functions integral minus infinity to plus infinity what is f of u f of u is e raised to minus u square and what about g of x minus u we simply replace x by x minus u that's all so this is our g of x so we have to find g of x minus u so this become e raised to minus instead of x we use x minus u so x minus u whole square this is this is our f of u this is our g of x minus u right okay before integration first of all we are going to simplify this integral okay where this is of the form e raised to a into e raised to b so we can combine the powers that is e raised to a plus b and we expand this bracket so this integral become e raised to minus u square minus this term become x square minus 2x u plus u square correct if you expand this bracket this is minus x square this is plus uh, this is minus x square this become plus 2x u and this become minus u square already we have one minus u square so combining these two we get minus 2 u square clear okay by taking a minus 2 outside this become e raised to minus 2 times u square minus x u and this become plus x square by 2 okay we take a minus 2 outside okay next our aim is to make this a perfect square so this term is corresponding to 2 u b right because u score is there so our a, 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 we can use either a minus b whole square okay we consider a minus b whole square then here a is u so this term is corresponding to 2 u b right we have to find b so 2 u b equal to x u so we can cancel this u so what about b b equal to x by 2 so next we are going to add and subtract x by 2 square to make it a perfect square so this become we just add and subtract x by 2 whole square okay now what about these three this is u minus x by 2 whole square okay similarly we can simplify these two if this is actually minus x square by 4 this is x square by 2 by combining these two this become x square by 4 okay so this expression become e raised to minus 2 uh, u minus x by 2 whole square plus this by combining these two terms this become x square by 4 okay next we can uh, split this uh, expression as two terms using e raised to a plus b equal to e raised to a into e raised to b so what happened so become e raised to minus 2 times u minus x by 2 whole square into this is minus 2 minus 2 and there is a 4 so this become minus x square by 2 so e into e raised to minus x square, x square by 2 so next we are going to replace this integrand using this expression okay so this integral will become integral minus infinity plus infinity we use this expression that is e raised to minus 2 times uh, u minus x by 2 square into e raised to minus x square by 2 du and here uh, this integration is with respect to u so we can treat this term as a constant so you can take outside from this integral okay okay so this integral become e raised to minus x square by 2 is a constant with respect to u that's why we take outside integral minus e to plus infinity the remaining term du okay next we are going to use another substitution substitution is nothing we can uh, write this as e raised minus of root 2 u minus x by 2 whole square okay so we use another substitution that is uh, t equal to root 2 u minus x by 2 that is our substitution okay so what about dt dt equal to root 2 du so du equal to 1 by root 2 dt and similarly what about the limit of t whenever u equal to minus infinity this is minus infinity minus something still it is minus infinity and similarly when t equal to u equal to infinity this is infinity minus something okay something is a finite thing so in infinity minus something is a still infinity okay so the limit 
is uh, again the range of t is again minus infinity to plus infinity okay so this integral become it is to minus x square root to integral minus infinity to plus infinity there is no change in the limit it is to this become it is to minus t square okay because t is like this so it is to minus t square and what about du du is 1 by root 2 dt now this 1 by root 2 is constant you can take outside so this become and this is equal to uh, e raised to minus x square by 2 by root 2 integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus t square dt okay so next we have to uh, find this integration okay in our lecture 6 we also proved that this integral this integral means integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus t square dt that is equal to square root of pi root pi okay so you can directly use this result so this f star g become that is equal to e raised to minus x square by 2 by root 2 and this integral become root pi that means square root of pi by 2 e raised to minus x square by 2 so this is our f star g so this is our convolution next we have to find the fourier transform of this convolution okay we know that Fourier transform of e raised to minus kx square where k is positive that is equal to 1 by root 2k e raised to minus omega square by 4k that is our lecture 6 okay so here we just uh, re okay we are going to replace this k by 1 by 2 we have to find the Fourier transform of this expression okay so we simply substitute k is equal to 1 by 2 so what happened this become so when k equal to 1 by 2 this become Fourier transform of e raised to minus x square by 2 that is equal to uh, when k equal to 1 by 2 this become 1 so e raised to minus omega square 4 into 1 by 2 that is 2 so e raised to minus omega square by 2 okay so this is the Fourier transform of uh, this term so we, we have to find the Fourier transform of the convolution this is our convolution okay so our RHS is sorry LHS our LHS is equal to Fourier LHS of convolution theorem okay Fourier transform of f star g that is equal to Fourier transform of this is our f star g root pi by 2 e raised to minus x square by 2 and we know that uh, Fourier transform is linear so we can take this pi by 2 square root of pi by 2 outside so this become uh, root pi by 2 Fourier transform of e raised to minus x square by 2 and this is root pi by 2 what is our Fourier transform Fourier transform is e raised to minus omega square by 2 so this is our left hand side okay already we have seen that uh, this is our right hand side so Fourier so convolution theorem of Fourier transform is verified because left hand side and right hand side both are same okay so convolution theorem verified that means Fourier transform of f star g is equal to power root of root pi into Fourier transform of f into Fourier transform of g where f and g equal to e raised to minus x okay okay this is your homework thank you thank you all